Hey team, I'm Maddie, welcome to Science Side Up, and today we're gonna talk about carbon dioxide climate feedbacks. This is the last of our four climate feedbacks we're gonna talk about. It's definitely not all the climate feedbacks that possibly exist in all of humanity, but these are some of the more common ones and some of the ones that have the biggest effects. And I think going through these, if y'all ran into a climate feedback loop, I don't know, off in the wild, then you'd have the tools to understand it. So I, I, I think that's, I think we've covered some of the bases here. As the title of this video suggests, the amount of carbon dioxide that's in the atmosphere actually affects how much carbon dioxide the atmosphere can hold. It's, it's kind of weird. So to understand this feedback loop, we need to understand part of the Earth's carbon cycle. Specifically, we need to take a look at ocean uptake of atmospheric carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is water soluble. And all that means is that you can force that gas, gaseous CO2, into a liquid. This is how you make soda. So if you guys have a soda stream at home, every time you put a CO2 cartridge, I think that's how soda streams work, in it, you're forcing gas into the liquid. Now, when you make soda, you're putting more CO2 into that li liquid than it can sort of naturally hold. So that's also why if you leave a glass of, of soda out on the counter or in the fridge or whatever have you, and you don't put a lid on it, it goes flat. That's the carbon dioxide escaping your glass into the atmosphere. And that's fundamentally the same process we're talking about when we talk about ocean uptake of carbon dioxide. We're taking atmospheric carbon dioxide and dissolving it into the ocean. All right, team, so we've got the atmosphere with its carbon dioxide, and we've got the ocean with the happy little fish and its carbon dioxide. And in nature, just kind of left to their own devices, the atmosphere and the ocean are going to try to reach some sort of balance. So if there's too much carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, it will move down, it'll be absorbed into the ocean, right? That's that uptake, ocean uptake. Um, but if the ocean has too much CO2, then like your soda going flat, it'll release that gas back to the atmosphere. And so these processes kind of happen trying to keep that atmosphere ocean system balanced. Now, how much carbon dioxide the ocean can hold is a function of a lot of things. So it depends on ocean temperature, it's um, the ocean pH, and uh, let's see, atmospheric pressure, even how strong surface winds are. So if, if the winds blowing over the surface of the ocean are really strong, you get more mixing between the atmosphere and ocean so you can like dissolve more CO2 in. Very cool. So it depends on lots of things, um, but we're really just gonna focus today on how the amount of CO2 the ocean can take in is related to temperature. This, is a graph of CO2's solubility in water as a function of temperature. So all we're looking at is basically how hard or how easy is it for CO2 to dissolve into water at different temperatures. And see, the warmer the water is, the harder it is for that carbon dioxide to dissolve into it, to, to, for the ocean to uptake that CO2. Now that we understand ocean uptake of carbon dioxide, and I'll note that this is specifically in the surface layer of the ocean, um, it, once carbon dioxide makes it into the deep ocean, um, a carbon can stay in the deep ocean for a really long time. It's, it's, a, it's a net carbon sink in the overall carbon cycle. But for climate, we're pretty interested in this surface interaction. So let's jump on to our feedback loop. As always, we're gonna start with temperature. 
So notice, normally I say surface temperature. Here I specifically mean like the, the temperature of the atmosphere, because the temperature of the atmosphere is going to affect ocean surface temperature. Ocean surface temperature affects that solubility, so it affects ocean CO2 uptake. And ocean CO2 uptake is then gonna affect atmospheric carbon dioxide concentrations. Okay, let's go around and see what happens if we start, actually for this one, let's start here. Let's increase atmospheric carbon dioxide. Let's, let's chuck some carbon into the atmosphere. Why not? So if atmospheric carbon dioxide goes up, we know that's gonna cause an increase in our atmospheric temperature. That gives us our positive connection on this leg of the loop. The warmer the atmosphere, the warmer the ocean surface is gonna be. So this goes up. And as we just saw, the warmer the ocean, the less ocean CO2 uptake. So this term would go down. And the less CO2 that's in the ocean, the more there's gonna be in the atmosphere. So that would make this guy go up, another sort of negative connection because these arrows are different. And so overall, more atmospheric carbon, warmer temperatures leads to even more atmospheric carbon dioxide and even warmer temperatures. So this is another positive feedback loop. In fact, the only negative feedback loop we saw was that cloud feedback. This loop is actually really important for how Earth's climate has changed in the past. And there's some really cool connections between like what organisms have evolved and do they like respirate, um, you know, CO2 or do they like absorb CO2 and how that affects uh, global CO2 and methane concentrations and then, then how that ends up affecting global temperatures. And so this is really important for the study of Earth's past climate, which is known as paleoclimate. Paleoclimate is the science term for that field. Um, and that's what we're going to talk about in the next few videos. So, like what was Earth's temperature a million years ago and how can we figure that out? Um, so this also leads us to how has Earth's climate changed in the past and what drove that change? Um, so I think that's going to be some really fun discussions. I hope you guys come back next week for our first paleoclimate video. Okay team, that's all I've got for you today. I hope you and those you care about are well. Please like, subscribe, be kind, and I will see you all next time. Bye team!